guys, remember that it says write each multiplication fact as a repeated addition sentence. Repeated addition, we've talked about this, can be used in multiplication. Multiplication is repeated addition. So you can use repeated addition to solve multiplication problems. Brewer, what's this first one? Yes? Who's going to tell me what this first one is? Sellers. Wow. No, not the words. We're not doing the sight words. He's right about oh, that. Oh, 14. <laughs> He's right about this one. Um, I'd love to go through all those, but we actually 14, are running a little bit low. 24. Yet. Okay. We're not doing both those. We're still on the first part. Sellers, focus. He's right. 2 times 7 is 14. Okay, I gotta switch to a different one, guys. Yeah, I can't really. No. It's not even just that, it's that it's got. It's making my head it's hurt. Glitchy. Okay. So 2 times 7 is 14. But remember, we're talking about repeated addition, so we need to finish this problem first. 2 times 7 is 14. That means that 7 plus what is 14? Jack. That is correct. Well, there you go. So remember, when you use twos in multiplication, we're doubling. So that's your hand for that one. We're doubling. 7 plus 7 is 14. 2 times 7 is 14. But we're also doing, again, repeated addition. Now this one, and it says right here, number of groups and how many in each group. So we have six groups with four in each group. What is six times four? What's six times four? Ooh. Kylie? Ooh. 24. 24. So, what am I doing here for repeated addition then? What am I doing there for repeated addition? Jack? Um, it's repeated addition. Well, yes, but we're looking for sixes, right? That is true. 12 plus 12 is 24. But break it down even further. Break it down a little further. What is 12 divided by 2? What makes up 12? What plus what is 12? It's six, right? So then what can we do here for sixes? What do you think? We're not doing division, remember we're doing repeated addition. So 12 plus 12 equals 24, doesn't that mean that six plus six plus six plus six equals 24? Do you see how we have four sixes? It's the same thing as 6 times 4. Of course, you also could have done 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, but this is a little bit shorter. So if ever you're questioning how to do a multiplication where you can always break it down into repeated addition. Of course, I want you to get out of the habit only because it takes longer, but if you've got a piece of paper in front of you and you've got the time to break it down and you need to, you can do that. It's a little easier with some problems than it is with others, like twos are always doubles, right? Always doubles. Madeline. I did. I did. Six plus eighteen. Six plus eighteen. But that would still be the same thing as six plus six plus six plus six, right? Because eighteen divided by three is six, correct? Yep. Wilkins. Um. Put that on your face. I have a question on the one below that. The one below this one here. Okay, well let's finish these first, and then we'll do that one. Let's do this. This is good review for you guys. Since we've moved into fractions and a little away from our multiplication, we need to make sure we keep remembering our multiplication. Arrays look like this, right? We worked with arrays for a while. What direction does a row go? What direction does a row go? So, Sideways? You mean from left to right? Yeah. Yes. Like this? That's exactly right. That's a row. Columns go up and down. 
So from side to side, and we usually read them from left to right. Go ahead and go. Uh, would be a row, a column would be up and down. So how many rows are in this array? How many rows are in the array? Tama, how many rows do we have in this array? Five. Yeah, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five rows. There are how many dots in each row? How many dots in each row? Ariana? Four. There are four dots in each row. That means our problem is five times four. So how many dots are there all together? How many dots are there all together? As soon as Kylie gets ready. How many dots are there all together, Wilkins? Um, 20. 20. So five times four is? Everybody? 20. 20. Now, if we use repeated addition, what am I filling in those blanks with right there? What am I filling those blanks with? Bricks. Um, four. With fours. Exactly. Four plus four plus four plus four. Four plus four plus four plus four plus four. And it equals 20. Yeah. It's just a review. Just a quick review of uh, repeated addition to do multiplication. Now this one, in her classroom, the teacher has 197 fiction books. Again, circle and line, make sure you've got the important information. 197 fiction books. She has 81 more, there's your keyword, more fiction books than non-fiction books. How many non-fiction books are in her classroom? Okay, so two things. One, what's our operation, Ellie? So you're adding, which ones are you, what are you adding? Are you sure? Double check. What are your keywords? More than, right? And then look at the drawing on the bottom. Oh, subtraction. subtraction, exactly. So it's 197 minus 81, right? Which would give us, I got 116. So if I was to say that in a sentence, how would I say that in a sentence? How would I say it in a sentence? Madeline. You would say, in your classroom, the teacher has 197 fiction books. And she has 116 non-fiction books. Good. Good. Because it says she has 100, excuse me, she has 81 more fiction than she does non-fiction. Perfect. Okay, middle one again. What does partition mean, guys? What's the math term for partition? What's the one we use? What is it? Sellers, what is it? Partition? What is partition? What's the, what, what's the word we normally use in math? We've done it several times, guys. What is it? What Comparing? Is it? Nope. Because check it out. We group it. It's not regrouping. It says 18 gifts into three equal groups. How many gifts are in each group? In what type of, what operation do we use when we're doing grouping like that? Go ahead. What is the operation that we use when we're doing grouping like that? Um, let's see, Tava is going to the bathroom next and then Madeline. Tava, you can go. Ariana, what's the word? Division. Divide. It's division. When it says when it says to partition, they mean to divide. Divide 18 gifts into three equal groups. Anytime you're asked to divide a larger number into a smaller number, that's what they're asking. As soon as Aiden's back, you can go brace. That's what they're asking. 18 gifts into three equal groups. So what's 18 divided by three then? We actually just talked about this. I just, I just did this one. What is 18 divided by three, Brace? When breaks is back. Yes. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So there's 6 groups. 6 gifts in each group. Right? Now, of course, you could have you could have looked at that too, right? Because it says they divided them into 3 equal groups. So you could have gone like this. 
And you could have counted them, or you could have just said, well, that's 18 divided by 3. Because they asked us to partition or divide. Now, fractions! The part we've all been waiting for. Yes! Yes! The pièce de la Renaissance. What? It's French. This is the, this is the, well, I, it, that's not the literal meaning, but essentially what it means is the part we've all been waiting for, the, the main event, the pièce de la Renaissance. Circle the smaller fraction. Which one is the smaller fraction? Which one of these is the smaller fraction? Three eighths or three fourths? Three eighths or three fourths? Which one is the smaller fraction? Tell. Three fourths? Nope, it's not three fourths, guys. And I don't know if you can see the shading on your paper. I can. Yeah, the shading did show up. It's not three fourths. Even look at look at what it looks like. Doesn't it look like this one is smaller? Look at what what shaded in. Let's start with the sound effects. So which one does somebody who hasn't answered? Andrew? Which one's smaller? Three eighths or three fourths? Say it again? It's three eighths. Because here's the thing, guys, remember. Remember, hey, I need everybody looking forward, okay? Wake up. You should be awake now. Focus. It's only Wednesday, you guys are acting like it's Friday. Look up. Our denominator, remember, the denominator tells us how many parts we've divided the whole into. If the denominator is four, then that means each part is going to be bigger. If the denominator is eight, think about these as pizzas. Let's look at that again. Think about these as pizzas. If I took a pizza and I cut it into four slices and I gave you three of them, you would get three, three quarters of the pizza. That's almost the entire pizza. But if I cut the pizza into eight pieces, and I only gave you three, I have given you tiny little pieces. You've got a tiny fraction. Now what about these right here? Three fifths or three tenths? Which one is smaller? So, three tenths, three tenths is the smaller fraction. Also, I um, shaded in the smaller shaded area too. Okay. So I circled all these if I had smaller. I see. And you can see that, right? As you guys can see the shading, you can see which ones look like it's smaller. Makes more sense? Thumbs up. I'm going to see in some thumbs. No. Some thumbs all over the place. Last one. What time is it on that clock right there? What time is it on that clock right there? Nick. It is 350. That is correct. Does everybody have 350? Thumbs up. Did anybody have something different? Wilkins, what do you have? You're close, but see how that the, the short arm, the short hand is not after the four, it's before the four. Good. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. Go ahead and flip on to the next page. I just went way too far down. And we're going to move on to math. It's in your packet today. Yep, now the math is in your packet today. It is not in your math workbooks, it's in your packet. Let's focus, focus. Class, class. Yes, yes. Okay. Mouth closed. Volume level zero. Everybody facing forward. Listen. So, and I did have some requests that we do more work on the number lines with fractions greater than. Please stop talking. Turn your body, put your paper on your desk. I mean, at this rate, does everybody want to stand during recess? Because I can make that happen. Okay. So you better focus now then. Okay, everybody should be on this page. Reteach 12.5. This is the same lesson as yesterday, but we are continuing, okay? We need a little more work on this. This is the number line with fractions greater than one. Greater means what? What does greater mean? Ariana? Say it louder. It's larger. Andrew, I can hear you. 
Yes, greater means larger or bigger, right? We're getting, the numbers are going up. We're moving to the right on the number line. And we're going past the whole number, greater than one. Okay? Before we were doing less than one. Now we're going up. That's why we're going over the whole number. Do you remember? Okay, Jack and Coach Schmidt, I can see you guys talking. Masks or not, okay? Make sure you're focusing on your map. Shouldn't be doing anything else right now. Okay, let's start up here. We are going to go over these, and then you're going to work on these on your own. But again, and I'm probably going to say this twice right now, you guys need to read the instructions. You need to listen to me, okay? And you need to try them on your own. I am not going to come around and give you answers. That is not how we do this. You need to do the work, okay? So let's go over it again. A number line. You guys know what this is? A number line is a line divided into equal parts that shows fractions and numbers in order, right? And we know we read it in this direction, from left to right, zero up to one. Now, the number line at the right has blank equal parts. Each part is blank of the whole. What is the missing fraction on the number line? Okay. Read the entire thing first, like, just like we just did, okay? Read the entire thing. Let's go back and look at the first thing first. Zero to one. We have one hole. If all you see is a one, that means all you have is one hole. You're looking at one hole length right there. That's it. Now, it's divided into how many parts? I like how Ali called them jumps yesterday. The length jumps because we can look at it like this. One, two, three, four. Four jumps, which means it's divided into four lengths. The other hint is the denominator's four. If they're giving you a fraction, that bottom number tells you how many lengths it's, it's been divided into. How many parts, how many jumps. It gives you that information right there. So the number line at the right has blank equal parts. How many equal parts does that number line have, Kylie? Say it again, louder. We just did it. How many equal parts does it have? Four. Exactly. Each part is blank of the whole. If it has four parts, and now we're looking for a fraction. If it has four parts, then each part is, each part is what part of the whole? Bricks. When Talon's back, you go. Well, each part wouldn't be two fourths, would it? It. It would be one fourth. That's exactly right. Each part would be one fourth. If it's broken into four pieces, the only thing that will work is that each part is one fourth. Picture it. Picture it, picture it as, a, as a pizza. It's a number line, but picture it as a pizza. You've got a pizza cut into four pieces. Each part of that is one of those four. One fourth or one quarter. Briggs. Yes, please do. Okay, hold on, guys. getting the picture retaken. Hey, 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 sit down, sit down. Who in here is getting their picture retaken? Hands way up. Do I only have two? Because he had did his already. I've only got two of them? Is that it? For sure. You promised me none of the rest of you have, none of your parents wanted to do. I got to Okay, so if it's only the two of you, then Andrew and Aiden, go ahead and go. Oh, we're just cafeteria. Wait, do I have to get my thing? Uh, do you have the thing? Yeah, bring it with you just in case. My uh, mom did it online. Oh, then you're probably fine, but bring it with you anyway just in case. I'm sure your mom probably already did it too. If you tell me you cannot get out of it. Okay. Now, last one. 
What is the missing fraction on the number line? Remember guys, the denominator stays the same, but the numerator goes up one each time. Ariana. Mm -hmm. Two fourths. You guys we have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, right? You see, it's just like what we were doing yesterday. Okay, now, honest. Thumbs up if you get it. Sideways thumbs if you're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Down thumb if you just do not get it at all. Okay, that's fair. So, a sideways thumb and a down one, I'm going to take that to mean you're getting there, but it still kind of doesn't make sense. Up thumb and down thumb, I'm going to take that as you can totally do it, but you don't like it. Sideways and up, I'm going to take it as, yeah, I think I get it, but I still need some work. Fair? Okay. So it looks like most of us are, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's good. That's a good thing. Now, well, on your paper, there's what? There's not a line. Hey, guys, if there's a blank and there's no line, you still can see that there's a blank, right? It looks like it's blank. Yeah. You can tell it's blank. It just, even, even if the line doesn't show up, you can tell there's a blank spot. So don't worry about there not being a line. And I apologize, guys, you guys know that sometimes the lighter colored things on the packets, they just don't copy well. Taylor. What type of Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I hope everything goes well. We're gonna, fingers crossed. Oh, are they getting fixed? That's why. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. But, see, the reason that they can't, okay, we're, we won't go too far into this because it's finished math, but the reason they can't eat and have water and things like that before surgery is because it, it can be very dangerous for them when they put them under anesthesia. So I know they're really hungry, but they'll get to eat when they're done. Okay, now, guys, again, I will go over these, but you're going to do them on your own. So that means I need everybody paying attention right now. Joel, please turn your body around, face front. Everybody should be focusing. Everybody should have math up on their desks in front of them and paying attention. Remember, guys, this is the entire problem. That means you need to read the whole thing to make sure that you're not missing anything. Right? Look for hints. Look for the denominator. Remember that the denominator tells you how many parts the hole is cut into. Also look at this, I'm gonna give you a little hint. There are two whole numbers here. That means you have two parts. You have two whole lengths, right? You also have a denominator that's already been given to you. That's the bottom number right there. I'm trying to make that look like an arrow pointing at the bottom number. That doesn't look like an arrow, does it? Yeah. So, guys, don't speak out. All right, I'll erase it since the art critics are here. Here we go. The bottom number is the denominator. But the one fourth also gives you a hint in general because it's telling you that there are four parts divided into four, right? Are you done? Already? Good. So, I gave you some hints. I need you to read through the whole thing. That goes for all the other problems as well on this page. Hold on. Again, read both problems, whole thing. And then this says on the back, but go ahead and do it on the front if you have room, okay? But I need you to read them, the whole thing first, then go back and make sure you're not missing anything. Look for hints. Don't make your lives difficult. Look at the examples we just did on the top. I'm hoping everybody followed along with that. Because if you didn't, you're only hurting yourself too far. And I'll leave this on the board. But all of what we did here will help you with these two as well, with these three problems on the bottom. Okay? Then we have another worksheet right here. This is a problem solving reading activity for 
to give you some information. We are going to go over this one further. If you want to move on and start, you can. However, because I haven't gotten over it yet, I'd rather you guys focus on that first one first, um, and then we will go over those and then do these together, okay? Because we only have the two worksheets, and I want to make sure we spend enough time. I'm having a lot of problems scrolling today, aren't I? Look at that. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to leave that up there. I am going to give you guys until we will go until about 9.30. Actually, because I want to be able to do the other one as well. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys actually on this. Let's actually go until about, we're going to go until about, about 9.20 or 9.25, just depending on how long it takes everybody to get through this page. Um, ideally, it really shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes or so, as long as you guys have been focusing. But, so we'll probably come back around, I'll probably say about 9.20, I'll check in. Uh, 9.25, by that point, I want us to be going over. We gotta drive this information home, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over this one right now together. I need everybody paying attention. Ideally, you will have done, uh, either, now I think we are gonna have to close that door more, because it's, it's too distracting. Kitty. I thought I'd made this a little bit bigger as well. So, again, and I repeat this guy, I want everybody's hands down right now. Focus on what we're going through right now. Unless you have some question that has to do with this math or you need, what is that? It fell out. If you sharpen it again, try, try sharpening one more time. And if it doesn't work, grab another pencil from up front. In it. What do you have? My cast match me. Okay, I'll give you a minute. Alright. I mean, it's still finished. No, body turned around. All the way forward. Facing forward. Nobody else. All the way. All the way. All the way. Come on. Don't get distracted by other people. Okay. Okay. Careful with those ear straps. They do. Okay, guys. Now I need everybody with their math. This page. This math page needs to be open no matter if you're done with it or not. Right now. Let's go. This math page, if you're done with it or not, needs to be open. Go ahead and sharpen it. We are going to go over this one together. And I'm going to repeat again, because I had a lot of the same questions. Everything you need, as far as information is concerned, is on that piece of paper. I do not mind coming around and helping. But I need to see that you guys have actually tried it. Okay? And I don't want to hear questions like, am I supposed to do something here? What does it say? Who wants to read this one to me? Read this top line to me, Allie. Nice and loud. Um, I'm gonna read that okay. and I have a hiccup. Okay, hold your breath for a minute. Hold your breath for a minute, I will do it. Let me, let me scroll down. I also tried to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Remember, we had an example at the top and I told you guys Use that to help you. Ah, come on, all sorts of problems with this today. There we go. There we go. Better? Still have them? Okay. Ali, read this top line to us. Read it nice and loud. I should not hear any sounds. So this is obviously what they're trying to get us to. Show six fourths on the number line. Okay? But they have us going through a whole process, right? So first question was, remember what I said before, make sure you've read through the first question was, Andrew, what is the denominator? It's four. That's the bottom number right here. And what does the denominator tell us? Is that your old packet? 
Go ahead and put it in the, in the uh, black basket on the right. Ariana, what does the denominator tell us? Say that a little bit louder. There's four spaces before the one and after the one. Yeah, so in this case, there is after the one as well, right? So what it means is, you can look at this in a couple different ways. What the denominator tells us is that this line from 0 to 1, that's one whole. This is one whole right here, from 0 to 1. This is a second whole right here, from 1 to 2. What the denominator tells us is how many sections, how many lengths, it takes to get from 0 to 1. In that case, it takes 4. We have 4 lengths between 0 and 1. Which means we also have 4 lengths between 1 and 2. Now remember, do not change. I ran out of room. <laughs> Do not change the denominator. Keep it the same. There's nothing changing on the bottom. Only the numerator is going up. The numerator will go up one each time. Everybody should be looking forward to focusing. The numerator is going up one each time. Okay, so now it says the denominator is four. And then they give you a hint. You guys are making your lives more difficult by not paying attention. They give you a hint. The whole is divided into four equal lengths. Just like I showed you right there, four equal lengths. They give you another hint. Briggs, go ahead and go. Oh, wait. Uh, as soon as white is gone. When white is gone, I apologize. You and can then, see it's gone. And through after Briggs. Okay. There's another hint. There's a fraction already there. Brewer, each length is what part of the whole? Say it louder. Say it louder, I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. I can't hear you, say it again. It's not four, it's a fraction, guys. If there are four parts, then each part is what? Schmidt. Three. Guys, we're looking for a fraction, and it's already on the page. Andrew. One out of four, one fourth. Each length is one fourth. This is the same thing we did up there, guys. It's the same thing. Imagine you have, instead of a line, imagine you have a pizza. And you have four slices of the pizza. If I asked you how many would one slice be, what would you tell me? Ariana. One fourth. One out of four. It's the same thing. We're just looking at it on a number line. The numerator is what? The numerator here is what? Jack. The numerator is one. That's our top number. That's our top number. Now it says, another hint, there are six lengths of one fourth. There's six lengths of one fourth, okay? The point showing six lengths of one fourth can be labeled as six fourths. Now it says, plot a point for six fourths. That means they want you to label it. And plus, it says at the top they want you to label it. Right? Now, if you look down here, guys, once again, go ahead and star this here. Look at it. Circle it. They did the work for you. If you guys were looking at your papers and paying attention, you would see that. They did the work for you. It's right here. They went all the way to six fourths. You're doing the same thing up here. One fourth, two fourth. We need a different color, don't we? Okay, one fourth, two fourth, three fourths. A whole is, if we have four parts, what is a whole? What is it, Madeline? Four fourths. Four fourths. 
five fourths and six fourths. It's the same as down here. Same. They did the work for you. It was literally right there on the page. I need you guys to start paying attention to that. Now, is six fourths greater or less than one? Is six fourths greater or less than one, Wilkins? Yes. Greater or less than? Greater or less than what? Greater. Greater. It's greater. How do we know the six fourths is greater? How do we know, guys? How do we know, Madeline? Six is a bigger number than one. Six is a bigger number than one. That's true. But what are we really looking at, though? She's right about that. But think about it in terms of fractions, Madeline. The, the, the numerator is always smaller than the denominator. We what? That's a, that's exactly right. So if you ever see a numerator that's bigger than the denominator, that means that you have a number that's greater than one. So that is correct. Because we really want our numerators to be smaller. So if you see a number like six fourths. The numerator is too big. It's bigger than the denominator, which means you've got over one. You've jumped over the one. Check it out. Here's the one. Here's the one. And remember, the one is four fourths. So obviously, six fourths is going to be greater than four fourths, right? So when the numerator is bigger, then you're looking at a number that's greater than one. When the denominator, the small number, is greater, then you're looking at a smaller fraction. Just like we looked at on our morning work. Okay? Let's look at this one down here. Okay. Ah, there we go. Any points in a number like can be named using a fraction. Now it asks us how many equal lengths are between 0 and 1. It says each part is blank of the whole. It says the numerator shows the number of copies of the unit fraction. What are the missing fractions of the number line? Okay, so here's a little hint. It gave us a little piece of information right here. The numerator shows the number of copies of the unit fraction. Copies. That means how many jumps? How many lengths? Right? Allie. Okay. Well, let's take a look here. We have zero right here. And we have our whole one right here. We are trying to figure out how many lengths there are between zero and one. How many jumps does it take to get between zero and one? Sally. How many lengths between 0 and 1? How many jumps? 8. 8? Exactly. And you know what? He didn't even have to count the lengths to get that because the denominator is 8. The hint is right there. It's right there for you guys. There are 8 equal lengths between 0 and 1, which means that Ian, each part is blank of the whole. Each part is 1 eighth. Of the whole. That is correct. Each part is one eighth of the whole. Because you have eight equal lengths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get to the whole. Which means that the whole is eight, eight. So, and that means that each one of these little parts, each one of these jumps is one eighth. That's how we're adding on each time. We're just adding one to the numerator every time we go up, right? But each part individually is one eighth. Each one of those little segments, each one of the lengths, each one of the, what they call the copies. Think about this one right here. Okay, so look at the one eighth right here. Think about that like you took that one eighth and you tossed it into a copy machine. That's how you're ending up with all these. Those are all just different copies of one eighth. You just have 11, 12 copies of 1A. You see what I mean? 
What are the missing fractions on the number line? We have three, four question marks. What are the missing fractions on the number line? Briggs, um, first one. Two eighths. Yep, two eighths. Six eighths. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. And ten eighths. And this one is ten eighths. Which means, Ariana, what is the one? Eight eighths. It's eight eighths. Exactly. Tama. Oh. <laughs> Do you have that one? Did you get the same numbers? Good. Thumbs up. Perfect. Now, question then. What are the missing fractions on the number line? We have two eighths. We have six eighths, we have seven eighths, and we have ten eighths. <coughs> now, six eighths, seven eighths, and ten eighths. Six eighths, seven eighths, those are before the eight, right? So that means they're smaller than one whole. But ten, eleven, twelve, these right here on the other side. 10 eighths, 11 eighths, 12 eighths, oh, and 9 eighths, excuse me. 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, and 12 eighths. Are those all greater than one whole? Are they greater than one whole? Joel? Yeah? They're greater than one whole, right? We went over one whole. Now we've got 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, and 12 eighths. That means you have more than one whole. That means not only did you get all eight slices of the pizza, now you just got four extra slices of pizza from, a, some, from somebody else's pizza. What? Right? Okay, so now this says on the back, but again, you can fit it on the front. So if you did it on the back, and that's okay, but you can fit it on the front, so you do not have to do it on the back. It says, and somebody, some of you guys got a little stuck on this one. Let me see if I can actually get this to go a little smoother. I don't know what it is today, but there we go. There we go. Draw and divide a number line into thirds. We did thirds yesterday, right? But we also have a hint about what that means. Because they actually already gave us the denominator. What is the denominator here, Brewer? Three. Three, exactly. So that means that, Jed, when I draw my number line, how many holes should I have? Am I just going from zero to one, or am I going a little past that? You're going a little past zero. That's right. Going a little past one. So if we have zero here, one here, now we need to make sure that we've divided each one of these into thirds, right? So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. What's our first one right here, guys? Let's use a different color. What's the very first one after zero? Ariana. One third. One third. What's the second one? Jen. Two thirds. Two thirds. <laughs> Sellers, what's the third one? What is one equivalent to? Huh? What is one whole equivalent to? Three thirds. Three thirds. Yep. One whole is three thirds. So then what comes next after that? What comes next after that, Nick? After three thirds? Four thirds. Four thirds. And what comes after four thirds? What comes after four thirds, Kylie? Five thirds. Five thirds. And because I drew it out, we went a little further. We actually went all the way to two. That would actually be two. What would that one be, Brewer? Six thirds. Six thirds. Right? And that would be the same thing as two. So this is one. This is two. We actually just did two holes as an example there, right? Here we go. Six thirds is also a half. That is exactly right. It can be. Yep. Go ahead and go. Okay, so.
Does this make more sense? Starting to make sense? Getting there? And Ariana, it's actually six thirds is not one half, three sixths is one half. Yeah, My mistake as well. You starting to kind of? Okay. You're getting there? Sideways. Okay. I want to see honest here because if I'm seeing a thumbs up from people who I walked around and told me they didn't get it at all, then I feel like you guys aren't being honest with me. I am not going to be disappointed if you tell me you're not getting it. You seem to be honest that I can provide you the work, that, the help that you need, okay? And we can cover and keep working on the same things to make sure you guys do get it, okay? Good. So you have to be honest with me at all times. You are not going to get in trouble with me if you are honest. But I also need you guys to pay attention. Thank you. Okay, let's look at this one. Who had a chance to work on this one? Who started this page? Hands up if you guys started this one. Started or finished it. I know a few of you guys did finish this one. Yeah, okay. So, because we are getting very close to recess, I'm gonna go ahead and go over this one. Even for those who did not do it, so please pay close attention. Because I'll end up providing you guys with some more work on this area so that we can make sure that, uh, that, we, that, we, that we get up to speed on this stuff, okay? But I'm going to go over this again. So, let's look at this one again. This is a, this is a special type of activity for our, our curriculum. It's a problem-solving reading activity for the same lesson. It says, over the top, here's a little, little, little lesson here. Humans spend about one-third of their lives asleep. A five-year-old needs to sleep about half of the hours of each day. Bonus question. What would be half of the hours of one day? Jed? Twelve. Twelve hours. Twelve hours. A whole day is twenty-four hours. That's exactly right. So that means that a five-year-old needs to sleep about twelve hours each day. Twelve hours each day. I wish I had enough time to sleep twelve hours. Okay, you can use fractions to describe parts of a time period. Do you see how many areas you can use fractions? We can use it on a number line, we can use it for length, we can use it for, uh, for things like cooking, uh, measurements for things like baking, right? We can use it for pizza. Again, pizza is my favorite example. Uh, pizza or pie, I love pie. Pie is another good one too. Pie is my favorite. Cake, you can use. So use fractions in a lot of different areas. Fractions are also what the clock is divided into, right? So you can use fractions to describe parts of a time period. You can also use fractions to name points on a number line. So we did the number line, we've been working on that. The time period is also exactly what we're talking about, right? We just talked about it up here. We talked about a five-year-old sleeping 12 hours a day, because 12 is half. 12 is half of 24. So, let's scroll down a little bit. Paco spent four thirds of an hour, which is actually four thirds hours, because he went over one, right? Underline, circle. Sleeping with his dog in the bed before the dog left. The fraction four thirds is shown on the number line. What they're asking you to do is write the missing fractions for the other points shown on the number line. So what are our missing points then? What is our first question? First question. Down here for our fraction. The first fraction they're showing you for how much Paco slept, what is the denominator? What's the denominator, Allie? Three. It is. It's three. And our first numerator then is Ian? The numerator is one. For this one right here? So what is this? Tell me the whole fraction. One out of three. That's right. One third. Okay. What's next? What comes next? Kylie? Two thirds. And one whole is what? One whole is what? Zoe. Three thirds. Three thirds. 
One whole is three thirds. Do you see how that works? Three out of three. That's the entire thing. If I cut this delicious cherry pie that I wish I had into three slices and ate all three, I just ate the entire thing. I didn't share it at all. It's kind of rude, but you know, it's my pie. Four thirds. That's over an hour. Don't call out. Tell it. Five thirds. And then six thirds obviously is, it's quite a bit over an hour, right? What it really means is, what? What's six, what's six thirds? What is six thirds? Briggs? Nope. That's three sixths. Six thirds is what? Two whole? It's two whole. Exactly. Exactly. One is three thirds, two is six thirds. So if he slept six thirds, that would mean he slept two whole hours, right? But he actually just slept a little over an hour. Okay, now this one right here. Sue, keep doing the same thing. Sue spent seven sixth hours resting before a race. Again, underline, circle, do whatever you have to do. Make sure that you see that information they're giving you. Seven sixth hours resting before a race. Write the missing fractions on the number line, including seven sixths. Here's our number line here. First question is here we have what is our denominator? What's our denominator there? Don't call it out. You gotta raise your hand and say it. Jack. Six. Denominator six. So that means how many spaces or jumps or lengths will it take us to get from zero to one? From zero to one. If the denominator is six, from zero to one. Allie. Six. Exactly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or add jumps, which I like. I like using the jumps because I think it also reminds you guys of how we use these in multiplication, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Which is why we have our denominator as six. Because from zero to one, it took us six jumps to get there. Think about that even as the room, too. If you were going from one side of the room to the other side of the room, and that's zero, and that's one, I don't really know if six jumps would actually get me there. No. But you can imagine it, right? <laughs> One sixth. Okay, so what is next? What comes after one sixth? What is what is the numerator next? Brewer. Two sixths. Two sixths. So our numerator is now two. What is the next one, sellers? After six sixths. After one sixth, two sixths. What's next? Three sixths. Three sixths. Exactly. Talon, what's next? Four sixths. Four sixths. Andrew, what's next? Five sixths. Five sixths. Six sixths is equivalent to one, and they actually have it marked here, right? Aiden, what comes after six sixths? Six, six seven. Nope. Don't change the denominator. It's seven, not very six. six. Seven sixths. Exactly. And. Zoe, what's after that? Uh, eight sixths. Eight sixths. Now, nine sixths. Nine sixths is the last one we have on there. Let me ask you a question. Is nine sixths greater than six sixths? Greater? Thumbs up if you think it's greater. It's two. It's not two because we're going by six. So if it was two, it would have to be a 12 six. 12 six would be two holes. Now nine six though, we still have how many more to go from there? How many more jumps to get to 12 six, to get to the two? Ariana? Three. Three. So wouldn't that make that then? One, two, three. Make our lines here. Like this one. 
add 2 would be 12 6. So what would that make 9 6 then? What would that be? What's equivalent to that one? Let's say we were going just from 1 to 2. Would it be right in the middle? So it actually is, if you were just moving from 1 to 2, it would be in the half. But because we've actually gone over the 1, 9, 6 is a better way of saying that. But it is right in the middle of that. It's right in the middle between 1 and 2. But don't get too stuck on that one. Um, because really, when we have a numerator that's bigger than the denominator, it means we have, we have an improper fraction. And very soon, and the reason I'm telling you guys this now is because very soon we're going to start talking about how you fix that. Because we actually don't want our fractions to look like that. We want our fractions to look like proper fractions, or, or what we'll end up having, and we'll have, end up having what are called mixed numbers. But anyhow, last one. Stanley nap for five fourths of an hour, five fourth hours after school. Fraction five fourths is shown on the number line. Write the missing fractions. So if that's five fourths, then what's our first one? Tyler. One fourth. One fourth. What's our second one? Sellers. Two fourths. Two fourths. Two fourths. Ian, what's our next one? Three fourths. Three fourths. Three fourths. what's our next one? Four fourths. Four fourths, which is the same thing as one whole. And we have five fourths. What comes after five fourths, Ariana? Uh, and Andrew, what's after that? Seven fourths. Seven fourths. Eight fourths is, is equivalent to what? Eight fourths is equivalent to what? Schmidt. What's it under? Look at your page. What number is the eight fourths under? Look directly up from where it says eight fourths. Two. Eight fourths is two holes. Eight fourths is two holes. You can see that because four fourths is one hole, and now you just have two four fourths, which means you have two holes. Okay? All right, guys, we will have to. Continue with this type of math very shortly, but you guys need to go to recess. So.